Hello. Um, yeah, I'm here to talk about uh, generative models for estimating demographic information. Um, whether you are a social scientist, marketer, or policymaker, or even just a person who is interested in data, you might be interested in questions like, what is the most um, active age group on Twitter right at the prime time? Or what is the ethnicity distribution of um, voters who donated to Republican Party during last elections? Or what is the income distribution of the buyers of iPhone? And um, although these questions are interesting, most of the time the data required to answer these questions is not available. And I want to argue in this short talk that generative models can provide a powerful framework to answer these questions fairly accurately. And I will focus on one example to, to convince you. And I will focus on age density estimation. Um, US Social Security Administration releases data about baby names, baby name frequencies for every year. And those baby name frequency, frequency shows interesting temporal patterns. For example, if your name is Ashley and you are here today, you are probably less than 40 years old and you are interested in data. And if your name is Jason, you are probably between 40 to 50 years old. And if your name is Deborah, you are probably more than 50 years old, but still interested in data. And to make sense of, um, to make sense, of, so, so we can, so we can make use of this interesting signal in the first name by uh, using a generative model, which looks like this, kind of complicated. But the the, the, re the there are two reasons to that generative models is is really um, useful for this uh, problem. One is that it, they provide a powerful framework to incorporate this social security uh, baby name frequency statistics. Um, in the model to estimate without requiring any labeled data sets or supervision or, or training. And the second is that this model enables to get predictions both at the individual level as well as at the population level. And, and so the only input to this model is a list of first names and the output you get from the model is the individual level predictions for each person as well as the uh, population level predictions. And so we, we have done an extensive evaluation of this data. Here is a glimpse of it where this, this red line is the true age density of Ohio water registration data. And the green line is, is basically the, the method that I propose. And the other two is the natural alternatives. And then depending on which metric, which evaluation metric you like, we were able to show that the, the green line, the method that, that I just proposed, is doing better in terms of mean square error as well as KL divergence when if you want to look at these age predictions in, in a categorized level. And then we took on data from Twitter and then we try to replicate the probably popular peer research study about Twitter demographics. And we were able to closely um, replicate the results by getting a random uh, Twitter users from them. But then we realized that they actually had a methodological limitations in their study because they weren't able to make phone calls to those Twitter users who are less than 18 years old. So they were able to, they, they didn't report results on them, but our method doesn't have that limitation. So we were able to not only replicate their results, but also um, uh, find that maybe the second most active user group on Twitter is less than 18 years old, which was overlooked in their study. And this is a study we did where how the diversity in terms of uh, age changed on Twitter over time, starting from June 2011 until May of this year. And, and some age groups are overrepresented compared to their internet population. Some age groups are underrepresented. And this is another analysis we did where this is the, the x-axis is the hour of the day. And this is which age group is active at what time during the day. And an interesting thing is that, so this is uh, 65 plus, which is um, active through early in the day. And this is less than 18 years old, which is active later in the evening. And if you look at it very closely, it's like the mirror image of, of each other, almost. And this is another tool we, we built, which is basically to understand, uh, we, we built this using more than 5 million tweets. and. Um, of ranging for two, over a two month period to understand linguistic differences among different age groups. And this is basically showing you two different versions of smiley face. And if the, the first one is the one with the uh, dash in between and the other one is the one that's a simpler version, there is no dash in between. 
And then it, it turns out that the one with the dash is mainly used by older people. X-axis is from older to younger. And the one with the simpler one is used with, by the younger um, Twitter users. And if, next time, if you are texting, um, watch on your smile faces. That, that might reveal your age a little bit. And this is available, publicly available on this website, predict.cs.umass.edu. And just to wrap up, um, I showed you a generative model for uh, predicting age density estimation uh, using social security baby name frequency data. A similar model can be used to predict ethnicity using um, last name. And another extension of this model can be done to predict income using uh, zip code data. And using these demographic um, estimators combined with social media data, you can come up with um, exploration tools that can um, be useful for marketers or social scientists. And we have a prototype of it at predict.cs.umscdu. Thank you.